Fans were no doubt shocked and confused when Shane McMahon, who wasn't even an official participant in the WWE's World Cup tournament, managed to win it. He replaced The Miz and managed to win the tournament by hitting the coast to coast on Dolph Ziggler. From that moment on, Shane would proclaim to be the best in the world, and whilst it didn't immediately start a heel run, he would eventually turn heel on his tag team partner The Miz and start feuding with him. The Miz would lose to McMahon in their first bout at WrestleMania 35, and unexpectedly got another win in their steel cage bout at this year's Money in the Bank pay-per-view, leading to virtually no payoff as Shane subsequently feuded with Roman Reigns, even defeating him with a little help from Drew McIntyre at Super Showdown 2019, marking this as Roman Reigns' first official loss since his return earlier this year. But why the big push? Well, it's believed that his best in the world gimmick will actually become a reality, as WrestleVotes mentioned that the payoff could see Shane McMahon winning the WWE World Championship, defeating Kofi Kingston. He tweeted, I've asked what the payoff is to this major Shane McMahon push in TV time allotment, no one seems to have a solid answer. One source said he could see, just as speculation here, Shane being the one to defeat Kofi for the title. That would be something. We're certainly aware that this is speculation on the part of the source and WrestleVotes doesn't have the best track record when it comes to insider information, but this seems believable enough to happen in the WWE. Back in November last year, we predicted it happening based on a number of reasons, one being it would no doubt create nuclear heat and lead to a new McMahon era. Even though the McMahons and Triple H promised late last year when addressing the low ratings that there will be no longer any authority figures on television, there obviously still is, as Shane has a presence on both shows and has even changed a few rules on the spot, like disabling the 24-7 rule until the main event was concluded. Let's also not forget that a McMahon has been WWE Champion before, as on September 14th, 1999 edition of SmackDown, Vince McMahon went one-on-one -on -one with WWE Champion Triple H, with Shane McMahon as the guest referee. The win was controversial to say the least, as Vince wasn't even a wrestler and was booked to win the WWE's most coveted prize, causing massive heat. The same could ultimately happen with Shane O'Mac, as he would cheat his way to win the WWE Championship, elevating him as one of the biggest heels to grace the squared circle, as he holds hostage the WWE's most illustrious belt in an attempt to inflate his ego further. In other news, the new Fox Smackdown logo has appeared on advertisements for its eventual move to the network in October. Interestingly, it no longer has the word live in the title, even though it will be aired live. The logo also has an old school aesthetic, or maybe that's just how we see it. What do you guys think of it? A few matches from July's Extreme Rules pay-per-view have also been advertised on the Wells Fargo Center's official website. Again, take this one with a pinch of salt, as this might not be the official card, but it mentioned AJ Styles will be wrestling, there'll be a two-on-one handicap match between Roman Reigns, Shane McMahon and Drew McIntyre, uh, meh. another freaking Corbin vs Seth Rollins match for the Universal title, this time a tables match. The best thing here is the idea of a triple threat match for the championship involving Kofi Kingston, Kevin Owens and Dolph Ziggler. What do you guys think of the matches? Lastly, we're only two weeks away from grounds for a rematch, whoa, 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 we're sorry, stomping grounds, a pay-per-view that features pretty much 70% rematches from both WrestleMania and Super Showdown, and even with that idea, WWE are surprised to see that tickets aren't moving for the event. Stomping grounds is set to take place on 23rd June from the Tacoma Dome in Tacoma, Washington. The dome has a seating capacity of around 23,000, which is definitely too big for a standard pay-per-view but WWE have arranged it specifically so that it'll only seat between 10,000 to 15,000 fans, tapering off most of the higher sections. But even with that figure in mind, WWE are still struggling to sell seats. On Ticketmaster, you can see that there are still plenty of seats available. Tickets are between $27 to $652, with most of the floor seats being sold. This means there are still some die-hard fans willing to shell out that much money to watch something that belongs on either Raw or SmackDown. Whilst WWE might get an influx of last-minute buyers, it's just another indication that the product is extremely stale at the moment. The only thing that could spice up this pay-per-view is Corbin choosing Brock Lesnar as a special guest referee, where he eventually screws over Rollins, Corbin is now a new champion, and then Lesnar cashes in on Corbin. Just an idea. 
Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below, subscribe if you haven't already, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.